All right, greetings and salutations. Welcome to Tanisha's Reading Corner Podcast. I am your host, Tanisha. Tanisha's Reading Podcast is dedicated to anyone who desires to make reading a daily habit as a form of self-care. To stay updated when a new podcast is uploaded, please subscribe to the channel. In addition, you can find me on Instagram at Tanisha's Reading Corner for many book recommendations and tips and tricks on how to keep reading a daily habit. Let's dive into today's episode. All right, welcome back to another episode of Tanisha's Reading Corner. Today we are talking about reading and the brain, how the brain learns how to read, how the brain is changed by reading, how reading daily can impact the brain health, what parts of the brain are used when reading, and the research done to prove that reading impacts the brain in a positive way. There was a lot to unpack this episode, so let's get started. How the brain learns how to read. From the brain's point of view, learning to read consists of first, recognizing the letters and how they combine into written words, second, connecting them to the brain system for coding of speech sounds and for meaning. Reading starts in your brain like any other visual stimulation. In the visual areas of the occipital part of the brain, or the back of your head, but then quickly moves into areas which concern the recognition of the written word. So what does that mean? It is a mere matter of seconds. So this generally means that in a mere matter of seconds, the brain is acknowledging a word, processing it, and being able to communicate a word back out into the world. Professor Denai Research calls this area of the brain our letterbox because it is where all of our knowledge of letters are eventually stored. So the things that we learn, they never go away. It stays stuck literally in the back of your head. From there, there is an explosion of activity into two parts of the brain that works. One that concerns the meaning of the words and another one that concerns the pronunciation and articulation of those words. And this all starts in childhood. Studies have shown that children who are encouraged to read at home prior to ever coming into a classroom generally do better on exams because they are ahead of the curve. One such study done at the University of Melbourne tested the reading skills of girls and boys ages from four to five and showed that the children who read daily with their parents had more developed reading and cognitive skills. What was interesting about this particular research paper was that it did not matter the family's background or home environment. The frequency in which a child read helped to develop the ch- how to deepen the child's learning skills. And all those skills can be developed prior to a child stepping inside the foot of a classroom. That is because this this is due to in part that the reading consists uh, essentially of creating an interface between your vision system and your language system. To emphasize this point further, your brain has areas that have shared spoken word and written language. So essentially, this all existed in your brain prior to any knowledge, whatever. It just takes a matter of exercising it. The study does state that there is no clear way to definitely state that parents reading to their kids causes for better skills, but there is definitely a correlation there. So everyone's brain anatomy is changed by learning to read. Young or old, it does not matter. Reading is the gateway to a healthier brain. Independent studies done at Stanford and Harvard demonstrate that reading changes in the brain as we build new connections and strengthen the neural pathways. This study conducted over an eight-week period took elementary age children that had poor reading skills and gave them the task to read daily. What the data showed that consistently reading helped the weaker readers develop pathways, neural pathways, that resemble that of stronger readers. In addition to that study, a study conducted at the Sam State University in Houston showed that 65 high school students there were encouraged, well, half of them were encouraged to find time in their daily day to read a book for pleasure, for fun, not relating to schoolwork, while the other half were told to only read when it was required for school activities. Now, what was being measured here were the grades of the students and how it was affected from the kids who got to read for fun versus the one who only read just for school purposes. After nine weeks, what was measured was a test score for a U.S. history class, and the data proved the students who got to read for fun scored on average 84.5% of the test, whereas the ones who only read for school averaged 82.5% in 
So in summation, this data show that students that got to read for pleasure did better in school than those that did not. That is why reading daily works, because it acts like an exercise for our brain and it keeps it young and vital. It stimulates the mind and improves mental health. There are researches out now that proves reading can in fact improve, prevent cognitive decline. Studies have shown that older people who read daily maintain and improve their ability to remember people, places, and things. So essentially the brain is a muscle, one big gray muscle, just like the muscles in our arms and legs. It gets stronger and healthier the more you work and use it. The National Institute on Aging recommends that adding minutes in our days to either read a book or a magazine keeps our mind busy. And when the mind is busy, the mind is working. And when the mind is working, it is healthy. Reading is the best way to work out the mind, essentially because it is a demanding task, reading, in a neurological way speaking, because it requires a ton of concentration and intellectual activity. This has been proven because researchers have shown through MRI scans and brain mapping that reading is achieved from an anatomical point of view through a complex neuronal network. The circuits and signals are a sign of intense brain activity, which in time strengthens our brains. To break this down further, our nervous system operates like a cable line. It is connected of different wires that send signals to and from the body. So when we strengthen those lines, it makes them work better and more efficient. Now studies have also shown that reading has a positive effect on slowing down the mental decline as we get older. While there are no studies that adamantly prove this, but there are sources that states that a good probability that reading can slow down the process of diseases such as Alzheimer's disease and dementia. When we reach a certain age, our, bar- our brain starts to deteriorate. While this is inevitable, with all things in the body, everything will deteriorate. However, the rate at which deterioration occurs can be influenced by a series of factors. One of them has to do with how engaged we keep our brains daily. Alzheimer's disease and dementia have been proven to be avoided or at least delayed by the simple act of reading. While a specific amount of time spent reading per day hasn't been included in these studies, the consensus is that daily reading, sessions lasting 20 minutes or more, is a good enough workout for our brains to delay a mental decline. Therefore, it's safe to say that to keep our brains sharp as we age, reading is the good way to go. So, just like a morning run, just like strength training, just like yoga, reading is a healthy habit that does wonders for our brain and it strengthens it, creates neurological pathways that we're better able to critically think and we're better able to communicate and we're better able to understand and learn and this world that we're in right now. All right, before we continue onward, we're going to take a quick little break. Uh, I have a quick little product promotion that I want to introduce to you guys. Then we'll jump right back into the episode. So please stay tuned. Ladies of the podcast, did you know that your period is not supposed to hurt? Periods are normal, but the pain should not be. Inflammation occurs naturally on your cycle, but painful periods indicate that the inflammation is higher than it should be. That's where Semaine supplements come in. Semaine, PMS supplements comes packed with nine superpowered plant extracts and minerals. Semaine will not only help to lower your pain levels, but to also support your body naturally from cycle to cycle. For more information, go to their website at Semaine, S-E-M-A-I-N-E, health.com. Also follow them on Instagram at Semaine Health. Also, listen to the podcast when you find a supplement that you like to use. Your Como code to Nisha's Reading Corner to get 20% off your first bottle. Again, the promo code to Nisha's Reading Corner to get 20% off your first bottle. Now, let's get back into the episode. All right, so welcome back. Thank you for coming back after that brief little break. So let's dive back in. So different parts of the brain get activated when we read, such as the temporal lobe, the angular, and the subringular gyrus, and the frontal lobe. 
Neural responses help you understand, visualize, and vocalize words. As we read, the brain's limbic system, that's the cushion within the brain, also activates our emotions as well. So, brain activity increases in the left hemisphere while we're reading. Your brain becomes engaged in helping you decode sounds, handle speech production, and use and comprehend the grammar. When you understand what happens in the brain while reading, you can improve the reading skills and it will help you learn faster and retain the information and also make the journey more fun too. So the parts of the brain that's involved in the reading. Now the brain doesn't use specific parts to read. Instead, reading engages different regions of the brain via multiple processes. Now, thanks to things like brain mapping, MRIs, GANs, you can see pictures of brain activity and the anatomy while we're reading. And the brain imaging shows which brain parts become active as we read. Now, a more experienced reader will active the different parts of the brain located in the left hemisphere, such as the temporal lobe. Now, the temporal lobe decodes sounds, gives you phonetically awareness. Essentially, what that means, it tells the structure of symbols, individual phenomes, and words. The parts of the temporal lobe responsible while reading include the occipital temporal region. That's located at the back, which helps you become fluent reading since it stores images and the meaning of words. So that's the text box that we were talking about earlier. And also it helps you quickly identify letters, words, language without having to sound them out every time. And also the partial temporal region located towards the back works to break down words into sounds. Another uh, structure of the brain that helps with reading is the angular and the subrangular gyrus. Now these link the or integrate multiple parts of the brain to perform the reading activity. Essentially they connect the letter by letter to form the words and able to read aloud. So this is the part of the brain that takes the words C, A, and T and helps us to put it all together to say cat. And then we have the frontal lobe. Now the frontal lobe is responsible for creating speech sound. It helps you think about pronunciating written words. Pronouncing written words. Ooh, here we go. It helps different functions for speech, such as reading fluently, understanding grammar, complex and simple, and also producing speech. Now all this brain activity that pro- now the brain activity processes that take place while we're reading. Reading is a complicated process that activates different neural responses in the brain, as mentioned earlier. Now, understanding this brain activity while understanding the brain activity can also help us in just wanting to read more because it's kind of fascinating. So here we go. First, you have the moral logical recognition. So what does that mean? Essentially, your left frontal lobe activates the moral logical recognition for you to understand the words that create a understand the letters that then create words. And so that process of understanding letters that create words activates the visual cortex and it moves the word to the angular rotation to have a phenol representation of the word as it is seen to the gyrus. So essentially the words are then transported to the frontal and temporal lobes where you can know the meaning. At this point you get the meaning and the morphological recognition in the lower anterior frontal gyrus to combine them. Next process is the text comprehension. After understanding the words, the next step is to comprehend them. Examining the synthetic and sem- synthetic and semantic relations. In other words, you will analyze how the words flow, the tenses, and the information on the title. So it helps essentially to process a broader meaning since reading is related to memory. Then the next process, emotional and cognitive processes. The brain processes what's happening in the limbic system, which activates our emotions. Activating emotions from memory and learning is an active way to accept new information. Emotion reading increases your attention span. Very true. When we have an emotional connection to something, we're better able to remember it. Case in point. Um, for example, currently I'm reading a book, which is a very good one. It's called Sweet Slop Sweet soft penalty rhythm now mind you i'm reading this book for the very first time but there are characters in this book that like even though i'm reading it i can immediately identify with them because i understand the emotion that's behind it and it helps me to better understand and be able to explain it to other people as well so there you go reading emotionally charged words 
increases your reading time. Definitely. Emotional stories will activate your attention and motivation networks in your brain. When you're more connected to a body of work, you're more willing to want to read it. Very true. So now, uh, let's go on. So I think the bigger picture of all this is why. Why am I sitting here telling you this? Why am I talking about brain structures and all this stuff? Well, for me, I think the why is the most important part of this whole podcast. Why reading daily? Why do this? Because it is important. It is imperative. I've gone over the research studies and I've shown you, I haven't really shown you, but I've talk to you about why this is so important when we understand the why factor of why something is so important we're more readily able to do it as mentioned earlier our reading is connected to our emotions so when we put our emotions in it we're more willing to do it and we're more willing to make it a daily task as well if i were to tell you to read daily just because you know just to do it many of you would just turn away from that notion However, if I explain to you the benefits that it does to your brain, the benefits that it does in the long term, the benefit that it does to your kids, for those of you who have any, you're more likely to pick up a book and read and keep picking up more books and read and recommending those books to other people, which is ultimately my mission, getting people more interested, back interested in reading. While reading daily may seem like a daunting task, here's a quick little tip that can help get you started. Now, I mentioned earlier that uh, a good exercise amount for reading is 20 minutes or more. So if you're a newfound person who loves reading, but reading for hours on end just sounds so daunting, just set a timer for 20 minutes. Find a good book, sit down, read 20 minutes. Once the timer goes off, you're done. And you can go about your daily business. And just every day, 20 minutes, 20 minutes, 20 minutes every single day until you know what you don't even need that timer and now you just want to read because it's fun Lao Tzu once said a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step and that single step here is those 20 minutes to help strengthen your brain all right so a good way to end this quick little pod this podcast is a nice quote from George R.R. Martin that reads in quote, a mind needs a book as a sword needs a whetstone if it is to keep its edge. I will leave that with you. But before I let you go, I mean, that was a lot of information that covered. If you're curious to know more about the brain and reading and all the research that's being done, check out the sources in the show notes for for more information. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. It was fun doing the research and I'm so excited to share it with you. So, uh, just some short business. Coming up next week will be the first book review for, drum roll, Sweet, Soft, Plenty Rhythm, a novel by Laura Ryle. You heard me mention the book in this podcast just a little bit, but I will be diving deeper into the central themes, the characters, Oh, the characters, my goodness. There's one, his name is Circus. Ooh, yes. <laughs> we'll be getting into that next week. But if you wish to read the book before the podcast next week, because there will be spoilers, because I'll be going into depth with it, I also highly recommend it because it's just overall, it's just an amazing visual body of work. It is available wherever you get your books. So, until next time, I'm wishing you all good wellness and good reading. I thank you so much for listening to the podcast. Oh, please, also, before I let you go, follow me on Instagram at Tanisha's Reading Pod, at Tanisha's Reading Corner. <laughs> and also, please, if you like this episode, loved it, please li- rate the episode, write a review, share with a family member, so that way we can support the podcast and also help guide more people into reading daily. All right, once again, until next time, wishing you all wellness and good reading. Have a good day.